On October 25th, the Oakland community took to the streets to remember the one-year anniversary of the Oakland police's eviction of the Occupy Oakland tent camp. In the course of the violent early morning raid, Oakland police shot U.S. veteran Scott Olson in the head with a beanbag projectile, fracturing his skull and causing brain injury. At a press conference in the morning, community members spoke out against police brutality and Oakland police's use of excessive force against peaceful demonstrators over the year. One year ago today, we all came in the face of thousands of these pigs in their riot gear, launching tear gas at us, and we came back again and again. It says something about the nature and the sophistication of their repression. But right now, it is making it so hard for so many of us to come back. So what we'd like today is for us as a community to really reflect on what repression looks like amongst us, personally, in all of our relationships, right? And hopefully to also begin to collectively, as the anti-repression crew, all of us, to think about what anti-repression could look like. Later in the day, hundreds marched in an event called Take Back the Plaza, Vigil, and Fuck the Police March. The march began and ended at Oscar Grant Plaza, the site of the original Occupy Oakland tent camp. Local banks boarded up their windows in preparation for the kind of vandalistic protests such as took place October 7th in commemoration of the anniversary of the war in Iraq. That march also departed from Oscar Grant Plaza but was not organized by Occupy Oakland. Despite the bankers' fears, no such property destruction took place. Organizers posted on their blog, politicalfailblog.com, that, quote, Occupy Oakland has never planned an event which accepted the use of breaking windows as a tactic, end quote. At the march's end, a dance party and slideshow of the year's activities took place in the park's amphitheater. The event ended peacefully before midnight. Ironically, hours later in San Francisco, Giants fans staged a riot in the wake of the World Series. Warnings of impending riot were clear hours in advance, yet police prepared no arrest vans. Even after rioters set fires in the streets, including torching a public bus and pelted police with glass bottles, police showed great restraint in making arrests, in shocking contrast to the violence they have consistently brought to the nonviolent demonstrations of Occupy.